let's generalize what you know about horizontal asymptotes. Um, so one thing that you definitely know is that this function has a horizontal asymptote at zero. Um, and maybe you know that because you know what the graph looks like. Um, but you can also think about an algebraic reason why it should be true. Uh, a horizontal asymptote just describes what are the y values doing as x approaches infinity or negative infinity. So if you've got some crazy function that looks like craziness, but for very large x values, it's getting closer and closer and closer to 1, then you can say that limit as x approaches infinity of your function equals one. And this is just another way of saying that you have a horizontal asymptote at one because your function is approaching the y value of one when x is getting, as x gets larger and larger. So one way of explaining why you get a horizontal asymptote at zero is when x gets larger and larger, because it's in the denominator, uh, this overall fraction gets smaller and smaller approaching zero. So if we were going to generalize that idea, um, we could say that 1 over g of x has a horizontal asymptote at 0, at uh, y equals 0. Um, if g of x is an increasing function on some interval that goes from some particular number to infinity. Um, so all, all that means is, uh, let's imagine we could have any function here at all, and the only thing that's required in order for this fraction to be approaching zero when x gets larger is if g is getting larger as x gets larger. Because if g is always increasing, that means the denominator is always getting bigger, which means this entire fraction is always getting smaller towards zero. Um, this is actually not quite uh, what you'd write if you were being really careful about it. Um, so it's actually too strict a requirement that g be increasing. Like I could have a g function that looks like this. It goes up and then stays the same and goes up and then stays the same. This is called monotonically increasing. So we could actually say that g of x is a monotonically increasing function on some interval from an arbitrary value a up to infinity. So what did I just say? Um, the, like all we've done is I've just assured you that you could do like any of these, like all of these functions in the denominator are increasing functions. And so you can be sure that all of these would have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero for the same reason that this one does. If we wanted to generalize it further, we could make these be some fixed constant k, um, because obviously if... So k over x is the same as k times 1 over x. So if this approaches 0 as x increases, then obviously k times a number approaching 0 is also going to approach 0. So any fixed constant divided by an increasing function should have a horizontal asymptote at 0. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to illustrate how you can go from a single example that you have, think about the reason why it has a feature that you're interested in, and then you can take that reason and think about other examples that also have that same characteristic. And that's generalizing the class of examples that we have, which all have a horizontal asymptote for that reason. What about something like this? Um, use your own intuition. Imagine what is probably going to happen with this function as x approaches infinity. If you predicted that uh, this function is also approaching zero, so limit x approaches infinity of this entire thing equals zero, um, then your guess would be right. Um, in calculus, you'll learn some tools for making this argument a little bit more carefully. Um, but let me make a quick observation here. So the smallest thing that sine can ever be is negative one. So we know that this expression is definitely bigger than or equal to 10 minus 1 over x squared. Because all I've done is I've replaced sine with the smallest possible value that sine could ever be. So I know that no matter what x is, this is always bigger than or equal to that one. And for a similar reason, I know it's always smaller than or equal to 10 plus 1 over x squared. So here I've got 9 over x squared, and here I've got my mystery thing. 
and here I've got 11 over x squared. You know that as x gets larger, this is approaching 0, and this is approaching 0. And this one is always in between those two. So you've got a situation where you've got something approaching 0, you've got something else approaching 0, and you've got your sine function that's always in between. Um, so you know that it also must be approaching 0. This kind of argument is called a sandwiching argument or more recently, uh, I believe it's referred to as the squeeze theorem, um, which is something that you'll see in like maybe week two of calculus next year. Um, but it sort of fits in here, and so I thought it would be nice to show you that you can make sort of, I, I hope this seems like a very common sense argument to you about how you can compare an unknown thing to things that you know in order to make a conclusion about what might be happening. Finally, let's uh, just make an observation that I think you already knew. If I asked you to provide an example of a function with a horizontal asymptote at y equals 22, uh, a really easy thing to do would be start with a function whose horizontal asymptote is at 0, and then shift it up by 22. And now you're done. Um, and if I wanted you to write it in the form of a rational expression, a rational expression is p of x over q of x, where p and q are both polynomials. This doesn't quite fit the form because here I'm adding 22 on the outside, but I could just rewrite this as 22x divided by x so that I can combine them uh, because they'll have the same denominator. So I've got 1 over x plus 22x over x. Um, so that's the same thing. Um, and we didn't even change the domain of the original function because x equals 0 is already not in the domain. Um, but now we can combine them and we've got 22x plus 1 divided by x. And so now this is a proper rational function that has a horizontal asymptote at 22.